Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all, it's time to do the first step in this preamp. We're going to build power supply. We're going to get the components all mounted. We're going to wire up the stuff and hopefully within a couple of videos we'll be powering this thing up and seeing how the power supply works. So let's get busy. So yeah, we're going to start this build with the power supply like I always do. And first, this is using this 6K88VG Hammond Transformer. And I don't know if Hammond's still making this model. I went on their website and nothing shows up in a search. Mauser doesn't have any of these. But then when I did an internet search, I found the same part number and specs and everything with Allied Electronics or something on it. And there's several people that still seem to have some of these in stock. I saw prices ranging from $61 up to $125. So if you can score one of these for $60, it's probably a good deal. If you got to pay, you know, that $125 price, there's probably another Hammond model that would replace this with. And... Actually, I will do a little research on that, and you will see the number right here. And this appears to be Hammond's replacement for this, or the closest one they, they have currently available. So, it's got the 6.3 volt we need. It's got 500 volts center tapped, which will get us our 300 volts that we need for the plate. It's got a ground shield which helps for noise. So, looks like an ideal little unit for our uses. It's also 40 milliamps, and that's plenty for running these input tubes. So that guy's going to mount right here, where that grommet is. It's going to sit just like that. Wires are all going to come in the back. So that's the power transformer. Then, opted to go with this kind of a cord. Simplifies wiring it up. You don't have to have the IEC connector and cutting out a square hole. You can just drill a round one, which might be a good option for you guys on a lot of bills to simplify things is if you don't want to cut that square hole out the back of the chassis, just get one of these cords like this with the strain relief and just have to drill a hole. But you also have to have a fuse holder then because the IEC socket is what has the built-in fuse holder that I use on my other builds. And the fuse is going to sit right there. Power switch. This guy right here. SPST. Two contact switch is going to sit right there. Then we have the indicator. And we got this cool old school kind of guitar amp looking indicator light and it's going to sit right here and I'm pretty sure this is a 6.3 volt thing and if it's too bright we can always put a resistor in line with this to calm it down but anyway holes drilled right there for it so how are we going to wire up the rest of this stuff well here is the tube socket for the rectifier tube. It's a nine pin rectifier tube. And I went ahead and let me zoom in here. And as you can see, I went ahead and just cut off the pins that we're not going to be using. These two get the high voltage from the transformer. These are the plates. That's the cathode. It's going to go over to our tag strip. And these are the heaters. And kind of laid out how I'm going to run all these tag strips for the power supply. So we're going to put a three pin one right there and then I'll show you my reasoning on how we're doing these tag strips. Then we're going to put a five pin one right there. As you can see they using those screw holes are going to be close to each other to make a nice long one there. 
So Matt built his as a bus ground, and that's using a piece of copper wire like this, some thick stuff, and you you make like you know a thing that goes like this, and then maybe there's another piece that tees off of this and goes you know goes over in the other part of the amp. I'm not much on that kind of build. I know a lot of people build bus ground amps and you know to good effect, but I'm more of a star ground person. And so I'm going to build this in a little different way than Matt does. Now, if you want to build it the way Matt did, there's a link in the description to his website, and you can look at his bus ground layout. And if you want to do it like that, go right ahead. I'm sure it'll work fine. But we're going to do a star ground. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to make this our main star ground point. And then... This is also going to be a ground point, and we're going to run a piece of copper wire from here over to here. I'm going to make both these terminals grounds. So we'll have two ground points right here for the amplifier, and then we'll have this ground point here for the two capacitors that are going to sit over here. So we're going to have one of them. It's going to sit like that. It's actually going to be let me kind of go ahead and so those two capacitors are going to sit like that they're going to share this ground point in the center okay and then the other capacitor is going to sit right here and let me kind of show you how the wiring is going to go I'm going to have a wire going from this plate over to this pin which picks up this capacitor then we have our little small choke here and one of the choke leads and it's gonna it there's a place right here to mount it right on this plate so one of the leads the choke goes here goes over to the choke comes back and goes to this lead Remember, this is ground, so both these capacitors will be grounded on this terminal, but then we'll have a jumper that goes from here over to these two grounds that are, like, tied together. So anyway, choke, wire hooks up here, goes over to the choke, then the other choke wire hooks here, and then there's a resistor that goes from here to there. And then this is our filtered B+. Plus. Now I believe that there's also a resistor. He looks like he's put it between the plate and this first cap. Or it may be in line with the choke. Either way, not hard to add a resistor in the lead going to the choke from this point so not too concerned about that and we actually may not need that resistor depending on what our B plus comes out to be so again that'll get all of our filtering caps will be laid out on these tag strips this will be our B plus point and again this will be our star ground point and then we can run the star grounds out here to ground the tag strips that are on these input tubes back to the star ground point. Then the last thing we're going to use on these tag strips is we're going to have the 6.3 volt heater wires from the transformer come to these two points so we can tag all of our heaters onto these two points. So then we're going to run twisted pair of wires up here to this heater on the rectifier tube. So that'll take care of our power supply. And then also we have our illumination switch that's going to be sitting right here. And it'll be right next to the 6.3 volts. So it'll be easy to hook it up for the illumination wiring. On the positive leads going to the power transformer, let me zoom back out here. So 
So we have our switch and we have our fuse. Main power and the power lead is going to be coming in right here. So the common will go right over to here. We'll probably use this bolt right here to hook up the ch chassis safety ground to right there. Then the other hot lead will come up here to the fuse first. And you want to put the hot lead on this fuse terminal, not the one on the side. You want the hot part to be down deep in the fuse holder so you can't stick your finger, or if you touch it, you can't because it's deep down inside it, so you can't get shocked. Even if you accidentally have the thing plugged in while you're trying to change a fuse. Then this goes to the switch, and then the switch goes over to the transformer. You want the power to go through the fuse and then to the switch. In case the switch shorts out, it'll blow the fuse. And then that'll be our 115, 120 volt wiring going to the power transformer. We'll have our 500 volt AC coming here. We'll have the ground for the center taps of both the heaters and the 500 volts coming to the star ground point. And then again, we'll hook up the heaters there. So let's get busy putting this thing together. Okay, went ahead and got these parts installed. Got the choke mounted right here. The wires go in this direction. Put a little heat shrink tubing over the first part of this. This lead's gonna hook up here. This lead's gonna hook up here. This is going to be our ground. We're going to we're going to connect the ground wire between here and this point, and these two are going to be ground points. So we'll have a cap across here, cap across here, have a resistor across here. So we have an LC for the first filtering, which is going to be this inductor or this choke. So it's going to come to this point, go through the choke, through another capacitor. Then it goes through the RC, which is a resistor, then a capacitor, and then our B plus will be right here. We're going to put our heaters up here. Then we have our power wires coming in to the amp. The white is the neutral, so it goes straight to the transformer. The black is the hot. It comes over to the center point on the fuse holder. And the side of the fuse holder comes up here to the switch, and then this goes over to the transformer. Then this gray wire is the shield on the transformer. We want to ground it to the chassis and then we have our safety ground here to this same little lug point here. So let's get this primary wiring all soldered up. Get our tip clean. And we'll just start right here. For every joint or so, we'll come in and clean the tip. Get this one over here. Then we'll do this other side of the switch. Okay. Then we'll slide her up. Let's go ahead and do this wrapped joint here that cool off a second then we'll pull our heat shrink tubing up there we'll get our ground wire soldered up Okay, we'll pull this heat shrink tubing up. This is a little 
trick I use. I just use the body of the soldering iron away from the tip a little bit to shrink up the heat shrink tubing and there we go. We have all of our primary wiring done just like that. So then next thing we have to do is we got our 6.3 volt heater wires and we want to make sure these are twisted up and we're going to bring them over to this tag strip just like that. What I think I'm going to do is solder them into these lower holes here. We don't need to strip off a lot of wire. Twist these up and then I think I'm going to go ahead and tin these leads so we don't have to worry about the stranded wire, a little piece getting stray and causing problems. And we'll go just like that. And solder them to this lower hole in this tag strip. Just like that. And then we can hook the heaters up to this side and also up to this light switch and I had this extra hole here and originally the guy who fabricated this was doing like Matt showed and had a ground lift switch I don't think I want to do that and I don't think the way I'm using these star ground points it would be very easy to do anyway so what I think I'm going to do here is put a a switch here with a resistor that'll then go to this light switch and make this have like a bright and a dim setting for this light so that maybe in the daytime you can have it nice and bright but then if at night it's disturbing because it's too bright you can flip that switch and it'll go like into dim mode and that'll be a good use for that little switch hole and you know I don't I'm not sure this illuminator might be super bright we'll just see how it is when we hook it up so anyway that's how we're gonna wire that up so I'm gonna do that later after I get this switch so the next thing we need to do is to run the high voltage wires up here to our rectifier tube again we want to twist these up and make sure it's not just like one wire being twisted around the other they both should be twisted if that makes sense and I'm just going to run them right here between these tag strips. So, solder this one in place. And then we'll solder this one. There we go. That's our high voltage wires going to the plates of the rectifier tube. Now, I'm going to have to bend up a little piece of twisted pair of wire to run up here to the heaters for this and then make up a wire to go from here over to here and get our capacitors ready to wire up so let me prep all that stuff for soldering in and we'll come back and solder up that part we also need to bring these two center taps over here to our star ground point just like that and I'm probably going to solder them into the bottom of this hole and I'll show you a little trick on doing that when we get ready to do that part. Well we got a lot done in this video segment. We've got the beginnings of the wiring done on the power supply. We got all our components mounted and heading in that direction. Probably going to be one more video. We'll be able to finish up the power supply, be testing for DC there, and then move on to the front end of the amp. So. Hope you're enjoying this content. If you are, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. That helps a lot. And also, I want to thank Patreon members and also folks that make donations to my website. Super helpful to me keeping things rolling on this channel. The links are below. And until next time, hope you all have a nice day. Bye.